Hunter is officially the most nerfed class in Season of Discovery. From the explosive shot rework to the scorpion adjustments, we're all wondering what exactly you're supposed to do on your Hunter to have a seamless and enjoyable time while leveling. So I've done my best to give you the most painless path to level 25, but there's still a lot to go through, so remember to subscribe. So logging in at level 1, of course, make sure that you have rested XP using code KIPSO, and then for the runes, explosive shot and chimera shot are super easy to get. However, post rework, explosive shot is so bad, you will literally never cast this while leveling at all. It does like 6 total damage, just don't use it. Chimera Shot, on the other hand, is basically just kind of another auto shot, which is nice, especially with Serpent's Thing, but it doesn't really change the pre-level 10 Hunter dynamic at all. You also want to pick up the Master Marksman Chest Rune, even if it's just for the free 5% crit, and Flanking Strike on your legs is also in the starting zone, but with its 30 second cooldown, I didn't really find it all that impactful, even weaving it every chance I could get. Its main appeal is it's extremely low mana cost. You can also get Carve, but it's extremely useless and forgettable. The other leg and chest runes are great, but hard or impossible to get at low level, so just stick with this setup for now and get Aspect of Lion and Kill Command at level 25 later. Fortunately, this is still kind of boring. You're just kiting between your shots and finding ways to get to level 10 as quick as possible. And one of the best things to do that is to get the BFD world buff from Thunder Bluff or Darnassus as often as you can. The move speed feels incredible, but after level 10, this buff is even more important for hunters because you and your pet benefit from the stats. You also want to grab a hunting bow from the auction house at level 6 to boost your damage up a little bit and put a crude scope on it. I also recommend having a heavy short bow ready for level 10 or a fine short bow for level 11. After level 10, you can put standard scopes on your bows and you always should. They're insanely cheap. Just do it. Also switch from rough arrows to sharp arrows. Now after level 10 is where people are looking for some sense of direction. And that's what this video is for. So first of all, is the Beast Mastery rune really good? Yes. Is it insane? Yes. Is it worth going out of your way for? Absolutely. So you want to get this at level 10 and I'll tell you how. For Horde, since you don't have traps to get it from the Barons, that means we have to go to Silver Pine. You have to kill like between 3 and 20 of these level 14 bears outside of SFK until a level 16 elite bear spawns. You will need help killing this, but that doesn't mean you need to bring help. You can just go there, spawn the bear, and scream for help. I usually hate relying on other players, but since a lot of the runes require more than one person, it's kind of easy to get people to help you out. There's usually tons of people waiting outside SFK looking for something to do. For Alliance, you have a much easier time doing this. Just go to lock mode on here, and then click on this thing. There's other ways, but this is the simplest. It'll feel bad having one less button to push, but this just turns your pet into a machine. And as for what pet you should use, Veramos has a pet tier list on WoWhead that is constantly updated. At the time of making this video, there's a huge debate as to what is the absolute best for raid, cat, or wind serpent. No matter what the result is I'm going to recommend cat because it's just easier and more practical for leveling. Once you get to level 25 you can tame a cat here or a wind serpent here if you don't have one. Now obviously the best way to manage your pet is to manually cast their abilities but I know 99% of you guys are not going to do that and that's okay but with the beast mastery rune you really benefit from actually keeping up with your pet spell ranks which most people also ignore but it's pretty worth it to do so now. You can use petopia to look up the spell ranks and where to find them but I'll make it easy for you. There's new ranks every eight levels so your level 10 cat will want rank 2 claw and rank 2 bite but it's not going to have these so in order to get them you need to stable your current pet and then go tame a pet that has them and then use the ability a bunch of times and then you can train it to the first pet or keep the new pet because of the 1 to 25 bracket you only need to think about this three times once at level 10 for claw and bite rank 2 then again at 16 for rank 3 then 24 for rank 4 if you don't want to keep up with both of them, just do Claw because it doesn't have a cooldown, so it'll be way more overall damage. But just because your pet can learn that rank at that level doesn't mean that you can get the ability to train it to it at that level. So here's my easy recommendations. For Horde, get a Cat from the Barons. For Night Elf, get one from Teldrassil. And Dwarf, get a Snow Leopard from Donemurrow. Night Elves can get Claw rank 2 from a Strigid Hunter. Dwarves can get it from Mange Claw from the Northgate Pass. Horde can get it from Scorpions and Duratar. Alliance can get Claw rank 3 from a Black Bear Patriarch in Lachmanon or a Shore Crawler from Westfall. And Horde from a Zorm Stram Crab in Ash. Ashenvale, which is going to be level 19 at the lowest. Both classes can easily get Claw Rank 4 from an Elder Ashenvale Bear in the middle of Ashenvale. And as for Bite, Bite is much more obvious and common, so I'll just show your options on the screen. Here is Bite Rank 2, and here is Bite Rank 3. Alliance have some easier options for Bite Rank 4, but both factions can get it from a giant moss creeper spider in Hillsbred. I'm recommending these based on their convenience and the lowest level that you can train them. Also remember to upgrade your Growl to Rank 3 at level 20 because it still does the baseline amount of threat. You don't have to tame anything, just get it from the pet trainer. Hunter is still a fantastic leveler without min-maxing these ability ranks, but you absolutely should go get them whenever you have the chance. Now going back to the levels, 10 to 20 is just business as usual, which means blasting your way through the content with your Hunter pet. You can get sniper training from Ratchet, but it's extremely impractical go while leveling due to the fact that you have to remain standing still to maintain the buff. This is totally unlike sniper training in Wrath of the Lich King where you get the buff and then you have it for a little while and then you go stand still again. You have three bow options in here, the fine longbow at 14, 
the light bow at 16, and the short ash bow at 18. You can skip some of these, but the level 18 one might last you a while. In order to save money, you can avoid training a lot of your spells, and hunters have so many low impact spells that it's easier for me to just outline which ones are actually worth buying. And here's a list of those, but if you're going to buy these later, you might as well just buy them now anyway. And keep in mind, whenever I recommend to skip something, it doesn't mean you have to skip it, it just means it's not necessary. 20 to 25 is really just more speed questing, but it's a good idea to do a Wailing Caverns run, even if you're Alliance, for a few reasons. A, the Venom Strike Bow. B, a full quest run will get you a lot of XP. And C, you need to kill the last boss in Wailing Cavern for the Kill Command rune. Just make sure that you go to Stone Talon and get the quest first. At this point, even if you have the BFD world buff, you should still go into Aspect of the Cheetah because it's 10% faster. New bow options are the Ranger Bow at level 20 if you have plenty of cash, the Precision Bow at level 22, or the Long Battle Bow at level 24. These can be pretty expensive on the auction house, but you'll likely go into BFD with one of these. All the free raid BIS websites have the Steel Arrow Crossbow listed, but you're, you're not going to get this. It's like 30 gold on the auction house because it only drops from the Dark Iron Dwarf Elites and Wetlands. These bows have good DPS, but some of them are really fast, which means that you'll lose more DPS if you melee weave. If you do find yourself with a slow bow, that's when Flanking Strike has a ton of value. It also costs extremely low mana, but if you have a fast bow, just don't worry about it. I highly recommend that you just zone out spamming quests and then continue questing after you ding level 25. That way you'll have around 10 gold to buy the Long Battle Bow if you didn't at level 24, along with these cheap recommendations for Auction House Period Bis in case you don't have anything good in these slots. For shoulders, look for the Dark Leather Shoulders. For Cape, anything with agility on it is good. For chest, the dark leather tunic. For bracers, anything with agility. For gloves, the pilferer's gloves. For belt, anything with agility. For pants, the dark leather pants. And for boots and rings, anything with agility on them. Weapons are going to be the best that you can find with agility or AP on it, but preferably a slow two-hander for flanking strike. For instance, this green attack power axe that I found is totally good to go into BFD with, even though it's level 17. All of this gear you can find really cheap on the auction house and put on before level 25, so you'll want to do that to speed up your leveling. Pretty much the only thing that you need to do that requires level 25 is use razor arrows, so whenever you're level 24 or 23, stop refilling your sharp arrows, that way you'll have room for them when you ding 25. And the other runes that I didn't mention are either not that impactful on your leveling speed, or way too much of a hassle for you to actually go get. However, once you're level 25, there's plenty of downtime to run around and collect them all between Ashen Veil vale events and BFD groups. Make sure that you get Aspect of the Lion from Wetlands before you do BFD in case your group wants it. And as of right now, you can be in Aspect of the Lion and other aspects at the same time, even though the tooltip says that you can. So now that you're 25, look for when BFD resets, and just try and get in any group that's going to kill the last boss for a chance at that epic crossbow, preferably one with no other hunters in it. It is mind-blowing how much better that crossbow is than anything else in the game right now. But other than that, you should be ready for BFD, just remember to check the very most pet tier list to get whatever pet is best at the time. And you also want to make sure it has max rank of everything. But thanks for watching guys, this was a long one, I hope you guys liked it. If you did like it, be sure to hit the like button. I'm not sure how well this video is going to do considering my subscriber base is just full of rogue players now So it would really help if you guys liked it to spread it to a larger audience If you're excited to level something other than hunter Go ahead and comment which one you want me to do next and have fun in season of discovery guys